here we go. So you start off with a synth. You've got a sound that you like, and now you want to add an arpeggiator. Um, what you'll want to do is go to your environment window. And for a lot of folks, this you may have never actually gotten into here before. Uh, what the environment window is, is very similar to kind of like pushing tab in the Reason ap uh, application or Reason program. You get to um, take a look and see how all of your objects are wired together. So in this case, what we're going to do is we're going to make an arpeggiator. Um, it's going to be new and arpeggiator. Cool. And what we're going to do is we've got an arpeggiator track. And this arpeggiator track is going to feed the Eurocut synth. Now the problem is I can only play the Eurocut synth right now. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the arpeggiator and I'm going to drag it this direction. And Logic will actually ask me, would you like to create a new track for the environment object? Yeah, sure, I would. So now, if, even if I'm recording on the arpeggiator track, nothing is going to go until I push the play button. As soon as I push play, so you can hear from that that as soon as you push play, the arpeggiator is now active. And if I push, you know, record on the arpeggiator track, and I push, uh, push go. Now I've got some, some stuff. So let's take it a step further. I'm going to, um, just for the interest of time, what I'm going to do is I'm going to record uh, just uh, me playing a static chord on the, um, on, the, see, uh, on the synth here. And so when we play this back over the arpeggiator track, we get this. So this is pretty cool because now we can take some chords and if we wanted to add a little bit extra style to it or some different, um, different sound or different feel, we can run it through the arpeggiator. When we go back to the environment window, you can actually see when you click on the arpeggiator object, all the different things that the arpeggiator can do. So I'm going to loop what we have here by clicking this top tab and extending it out. And when I push play, I'm kind of moving some stuff around so you can see everything at once. We've got a resolution of eighth notes. We can change it to 16th notes. We can go from up to being up and down. Up and down too. So this is pretty cool. Uh, if we want to go a step further and we want to record what we've arpeggiated, um, what we can do is grab the sequencer input object. Now, in the manual, it actually tells you you can only have one of these objects per, and it's supposed to go in between like a physical input and sequencer input. What you can do with this thing is I can actually take the routing from the Euro cut from my synth here, plug it into my sequencer input, and do the same thing that I did with my arpeggiator, move it out here and create a new track for it. Now, when I push record here, something different is going to happen. So I've got something new. What I've actually done is I've recorded what the sequencer was doing. So now you can see the sequencer was performing this arpeggio, which is really cool. Because now I can also do some stuff by kind of moving it around or, or giving it a slightly different uh, sound or feel. Unfortunately, what you can't do, because the sequencer input is just an input, so I can't route this thing back into Eurocut. What I'll have to do is take the recorded sequence and move it. Take my, rec uh, there we go. 
take my recorded sequence and move it up so that it plays on that synth again. And it'll play back just like that. That's kind of cool. Let's take it one step further. Now let me undo the couple of steps there. All right. I'm going to get rid of this thing. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to reopen this thing and I'm going to say, okay, from the arpeggiator, I can actually, instead of routing it directly to a sequence or input, I can uh, route the arpeggiator to some other objects. So let's say I want to go into a delay line and what a delay line is going to do for me is it's going to produce another MIDI note uh, a minute or two after, or a, a, sorry, a second or two after. In this case it'll be, I'll have it do two repeats and it'll be two beats afterwards and I want it to be transposed by an octave. And then this delay line I want to go into, I'll have it go into another arpeggiator and this different arpeggiator I think is gonna my first one's going up and down so I want this one to kind of be a little different I'll have it go random and it'll be a I don't know 30 second notes now I'm not really sure what the product of what I'm about to do is gonna be but I'm sure it's going to be very interesting so um, the reason why I'm plugging it in on this on the arpeggiator track and having the arpeggiator track feed the delay line and that additional arpeggiator and then going into Eurocut because if we look at our arrange window here when we look at our arrange window this is where the MIDI information is coming from it's coming from the original arpeggiator track if we go back to the environment and we can see here's the original arpeggiator track right here and this is what's going to feed the delay line the second arpeggiator and eventually the Eurocut our sound and that is going to go to our sequencer input. So, if I play it back and I hear something that I like, somebody on some planet could like that. Um, if I hear something that I like, I hit the record button on my sequencer input and maybe I like the sound but I want it to be played by a different instrument or I want to just capture that sequence of notes. Hit the record button and now here's what I get. And here's my final product. I've got all this craziness here. So. I, I'm just hoping, you know, I'm not doing this to show off. I, I'm hoping that we get to do this to just encourage some folks to come up with some other really neat, uh, inventive uses of the environment window. It's nothing to be afraid of. It just takes a little bit of practice to figure out what objects you can send to where, and then once they're there, what do you do with them? Uh, in this case, we can take something sort of unique. If I was to do this sort of thing with like a polysynth, so let's go instead of Eurocut to the E, or uh, yeah, we'll go ESP. Polyphonic synth, um, I don't know, here, polysynth. Let's have it do the same thing. Get rid of these guys here. Now let's hear what that sounds like. Not too shabby. Let's take the same thing and put it on the sampler. I always have it do a um, so piano is probably okay. Cool. And like I said, if we come up with something that we really like and we want to save it. Um, whether it's just as as a MIDI sequencer or, or whatever else it is, um, going the sequencer input object is where that is going to end up uh, landing. So I hit record, and that's another kind of cool thing is it does. Um, 
it does work with real time. Um, so the sequence that you're arpeggiating uh, works with real time input. If you change any of the information of the arpeggiator over here, I'm going to go one step further with this in my next little lesson. Uh, but for now, yeah, just some cool, fun uses of the arpeggiator and ways to record what you've arpeggiated so that you can use it in all kinds of other different uh, environments. So there you go.